does anyone have a particularly uh, fantastic recap they like to give the stream and the group real quick before we get going? Uh, I could probably do it if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, to recap on um, the side story. We had briefly started on Amos um, riding back to his whole, old uh, hometown, and he had met two of his old friends uh, back when they were kids. Determined, Amleth um, went to uh, his old house, which was mysteriously transformed into a beautiful little town, even though Amleth um, had previously burned it to the ground. With this, he also learned that his uncle was still alive, and so was his family. Even though previously, in his childhood, his family was killed. Most importantly, his uncle had killed his parents, as well as Amleth um, killing his uncle for it, for revenge. Upon going back to the manor that he used to live in, he is greeted by his parents, and Amleth um, almost loses his mind over it. Finally gripping himself, after a few minutes, he's able to finally put his past to rest, literally. And after traversing through the house a little bit more, he finally happens upon his uncle with his two friends. And that is where we left off. If I remember correctly, uh, going down the hallway, or not the hallway, the staircase into the basement, right? Is where you guys heard your uncle like calling for you? Yes, that is correct. And we happen to find a very particular set of gauntlets. Particular set of gauntlets. That's right. That's right. Okay. I'm like, just trying to reaccess my notes. And uh, just, of course, I have to do that, like, verification thing where it's like, go to your email and do this. I'm like, oh, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and to kind of add on a little bit of detail, uh, his uncle and father were part of this cult that had worshipped a chaos god that is now dead, but is separated into multiple pieces of itself, and these gauntlets almost seem to hold some sort of essence of said god. That's right, that's right. And it is this cult-like activity that you, that at least so far you believe is what spurned your uncle to essentially betray your family. As far as he knows. Okay, there we go. I think that's a good recap. So let me go from our nice Christmas music as we start to nice dark academia as is everyone in the world 20 and prepared. Yeah. Mm, yep. I am. Okay. I don't see Cammy in, though. I'll be in there in a second. I'm on D&D uh, &D Beyond, so we're all good. Okay. So as you guys enter into the dungeon, you guys do see multiple staircases going up and down, kind of both to your left and right, of course, as you can see on the map. But also in the distance, you see various staircases going up and down up and down it doesn't look like it's staircases that would lead back up to the mansion but merely uh, a secondary level above this current ground floor that you're on while in the basement uh, in the distance you can see this large golden table at the very least gold plated table with treasure all upon it spilling off and standing on top you just see the very slight uh not slight well I don't know, a slightly handsome statue of your uh, uncle as you see the very well-made uh, figure stands right on top of the little gold pile and looks directly to the entrance pointing you guys stand where you guys are uh, let me make sure you guys have control over your characters but other than that would you guys like to go through and um, Specifically, Rob and Rocco, if you guys would like to go through real quick and explain to everyone your new your characters, because you're not playing Corvus and Rocco. 
You want to go first? Steak or should I? I'll go first. Uh, so I am playing Ragnar Lannery, a uh, simple hunter that happened to grow up in, still lives in the same town as uh, Amleth did, uh, as Amleth grew up. Um, has a family, has some kids, likes to drink at night, likes to hunt during the day, uh, you know, fucks around every now and again. Not really much to say about Ragnar. Not going to pretend like I fleshed him out a lot for this little adventure that he's going to be in. Um, Ragnar yeah, is a pleasant Ragnar. man who is pleasantly made. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Rob, how about you? Well, I'll be playing Robert Blade today. Uh, a Arminal Artificer. I did not flesh him out. His backstory is simply this. Grew up in the same town as Amleth. Was friends with him when they were kids. The events of Amleth's story happened. But once he grew up more, grew, went up to the capital to learn underneath the Artificial Guild. Left the Artificial Guild and came back down to take over his father's shop. Mm -hmm. Simple as. And a lot of the contraptions or uh, oddities here tend to look a lot more like... Uh, how do I put, um, vamped up versions of your previous inventions. The man took my creations and made abominations out of them. Exactly, exactly. So with this, you guys enter into the cold, dark dungeon. In the distance, you do hear once again, mm, Welcome to my abode. But besides that, just the, the, the voice in the distance just kind of laughing and uh, almost like echoing throughout the entirety of it. There's nothing else. What would you guys like to do? Hmm. I'm going to run a quick perception check. Mm -hmm. And with that, we have 19. 19, you would notice that a lot of the treasures upon the table towards the middle of the room, uh, while from a distance it's hard to see uh, exactly, you do not notice any particularly magical items. You only notice wealth and opulence. Uh, you notice gems, uh, even sell the balls of gold and silver and copper. Like, like as if they were ingots ready to be smelted. Uh, or ready for transport. These are large, um, actual, like, physical orbs of the material. Uh, besides that, you do notice that the staircases going up and down, they look... Mm, well-traveled, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, for how, where you are, you might expect some dust and some, uh... I guess I would say cobwebs and stuff. You know, you would expect some decay to the area, but it, you do not smell mold. You do not smell this foulness upon the air. And looking around, you can even see amongst where there would be maybe more dust your sight, slight prints indented in where the uh, slight dust. Hmm. I'm just speaking to his buddies. He might have friends down here. And don't touch any sort of treasure that might make you feel greedy. At least until we take care of this. Got so good. And we are just going to traverse on to the main floor. Just nice and slowly. At least I am. Okay, okay. So, um, so we're we're going just kind of just generally like this. Not nice and slowly, but... It's a very straight pathway kind of towards the center. Mm hmm Okay. And we are going to observe this nice little kind of object right here in the center of the room. Okay. So uh, I have a question for real quick. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm just moving one of these guys. Where I put him, is that like a balcony? Or... Is that like a so you Walden room? that would be going up to the uh, the stairs? So that is like a balcony. You do 
right now, if you were there, say if you're here, you'd be looking over Almuth right now. Maybe about uh, five, six feet above the uh, above him. All right, I'd like to do that uh, sneakily, uh, as sneaky as you can be when the enemy knows you're there, yeah. and uh, have my short bow ready. Okay, so as you pass by here, um, Rob and Cammy, you guys are cautious, looking around. Uh, you guys can see down the lower area, I would say around here-ish, you do see some shadows move. Uh, just because Cammy is being very perceptive right now and Rob uh, is with them. That between both of you, very easily, you can see kind of past this point, about 30, 35 feet away, you do see some shadows move. But it's at that point that Rocco, while you're going through here... Should I mention I have a passive perception of 18? That is a great passive perception. Um, that is amazing. As you go right here, then, uh, you would notice that there is a wire upon the ground. One that's actually, with an 18 perception, you just you just barely notice without having to roll. Uh, you... You, there, I, fuck, I forgot about the 18 perception. God damn it. <laughs> There's a, a rope upon the ground. It's like a, a, a wire that looks like it's connected to the statue in front of you. That maybe if you set it off, something might occur. I'm gonna step over it. Okay. Not disabling it, not disarming it, but not activating it. You just, uh, you step over the rope. And oh, I guess on. I could disable it with thief stools, couldn't I? You could. No, nah, I'll just step over it. I'll just step over it. Okay, fair enough. The safe is Yeah, we can probably use it later. True, true. So as you guys are here, to your left stake, you do see that there is a study. And much like how they see shadows over here, stake, you would see movement this way uh very slight you're stealthing trying to keep an eye on your allies essentially provide cover fire over the balcony but while you're stealthing you do happen to notice they haven't noticed you yet but there is something to your left i'm gonna sneak near and try and get a better look at it okay you get a little closer and go ahead and roll me a stealth check while i and everyone well everyone else sees real quick so, Omleth and R Robert, you guys are looking upon this table, and, and I was and exactly what I said. Large orbs of the material, gold. Right in front of you is a large golden orb, then a silver orb that is uh, upon the actual physical pile of gold, and it looks like it's rolled off, uh, but still nearby a bronze orb, slightly smaller than the rest, but it has each of them an indentation of what the coin they would be used to mint would be. You see tons of these uh, kind of all over uh, this little pile, easily equivocating to maybe maybe 5,000 gold easily right there uh, on the table, let alone the fact that um, the unminted coins and stuff would probably be even just a gold itself would probably be equivalent to another 5k. So you probably have about 10k of golded, unminted money right in front of you. But, Cammy, as you pointed this out before in our, our previous session of possibly a fake gold, you do come approach this with caution. As you said, uh, gold that might make you greedy is a dangerous thing. And as you do stare at it, would you both give me a wisdom saving throw? Uh, I was gonna throw a wisdom saving uh, saving throw. You said yes. Okay, and uh, we lost Robert, by the way. Yeah, we did. I think his computer might have turned off. A nose. Uh, interesting. Fourteen on. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, sixteen on wisdom save. Okay, 16 of wisdom. So we'll wait for you guys for a second. So you said 14 on your stealth stake? Yes. Okay, so getting closer this way. So <laughs> getting distracted from your your looking over them duties, you take a moment to look over and you stealth and you get closer to 
the shadow. You see what looks to be an octopus. Well, okay, so you guys, do you guys happen to remember Octodad? Yes, that, like, absolutely. Nobody suspects a thing. Exactly. Octodad, sorry. <laughs> No, 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 exactly, exactly. So, uh, imagine that, but in, like, a cultist attire, where it's, like, a long squid with a head. It has, like, a monocle on its eye. It has, like, a cultist thing with its two arms coming through. And it's, like, reading a book. And it literally just goes, as it just, like, lightly sits there reading. It doesn't notice you yet, but it, it, it is there and very aware, apparently aware of its surroundings. All right, let's let dogs lie for now, and I'll turn my attention back to uh, the rest of the room while, while still trying to remain as sneaky as possible. I am going to take an acid bomb, and I'm going to throw it on top of all of the money that sits right there. Okay. Okay, yeah, you easily, you're like, no, no, I said don't touch the money. Do not touch the money. You can feel this pull. And so immediately, almost like a panic, you take out the, uh, an acid bomb from your belt. Like, no, 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 no. You throw it directly onto the gold and stuff. You see that as it melts, it, uh, it begins to show cheap rock and metal beneath the gold-plated exteriors. It all was fake. The entirety of it was fake. Merely an illusion <laughs> to get you to be distracted to sit here for possibly ever as it melts you do see beneath is <laughs> a skeleton underneath the physical gold and the skeleton itself has markings all over it uh, it looks like maybe this was uh, I, I I don't know how to explain it other than uh, like the skeleton maybe looks like the tripwire that maybe disturbing the gold pile would have activated the skeleton and set off a trap, but you see uh, various sigils and markings all over the bones. This will draw them out. In a distance, you do just hear almost like a whisper, but loudly throughout the entirety of it. All three of you hear it. A loud, yelling whisper through your ears. Ungrateful. Spoiled. I wanted to come down here and do something about it. Silence. Rob, are you back? <laughs> sorry, yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. My nephew decided, Ooh, let's go unplug the rattle. <laughs> I'll go ahead. So, uh, so does he still have to make a wisdom save or not? Uh, I'll say just because he happened to be gone, he'll make it through without making a wisdom save just because you already burned the gold. Or uh, acidified right. the gold. Uh, but next Yo, no, wait, what happened? We lost the gold? So, so, so basically what happened, uh, I made a wisdom save, I rolled 16, um, and I just decided, yeah, not only do I not trust that, but I'm going to try and you know, throw acid onto the whole thing to possibly draw him out. Oh, that and... god. God, fuck. Well, it was fake. It was all fake. And there is a skeleton with a lot of, like, runes and markings on it that maybe, like, emphasis on the maybe, have you know, have something to do with the tripwire. Yeah, when the uh, acid itself hits the, like, the, the orbs, you can, like, pick them up, Rob, and you could as you wipe them off, you see it's just a stone underneath, painted golden. Well, that's an asshole thing to do. What kind of asshole would do this? A competent one. Can I it's actually try to identify the runes? Not, you know, using identify, but see if I know of them. 
absolutely. Go ahead and roll me an arcana check. Uh, steak, as this is happening, and the acid melts the gold, you do hear the chair that the or the stool to your left move and shift as you do hear clip clop of the movement uh possibly coming towards you would you like to take a look uh yeah i would like to take a look approaching right here ish around the corner i'll grab him a little thingy thing uh, is the uh, Octodad knockoff. He comes around, just like, blah, 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 and, like, looks at you, and immediately just stops, confused. Uh, in his state of confusion, I am gonna, uh, stab him with a, uh, short sword and a dagger. Go to give me your attack rolls. Uh, Rob, while he does that, you can look at it and just looking through you can see that the uh a skeleton had runes of animate objects on them it was going to animate the entire pile of gold and money aka rocks well interesting you think you did that Elmuth? skeleton had runes of animate objects most likely we have animated all these rocks which would not have been fun to fight against. Considering that this was very much in the open, it's a very easy trap to fall into. Everyone that would probably got to me. Most likely. But as long as we don't disturb it anymore, we can't <laughs> do much. With that, you guys hear as you turn around and up on the balcony, Stake has a dagger and a short sword impaling, and I mean impaling this uh, Octodad ripoff with two nat 20s. He, uh, you don't even have the roll damage. I'll just have you kill this fucker. Um, you just absolutely eviscerate him, turning him to sushi as you throw the head onto the floor in front of Kami. Quietly. 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 I'll just sushi, to be exact. Mm-hmm. The best kind. The eldritch juice. <laughs> uh, I will say, as a, what happens, you behead him, and the head, like, rolls off onto the floor and falls onto the ground, bump, 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 in front of Kami. As you slice the head off, underneath, you notice a human body inside the octopus. As if the octopus itself has been physically stretched to go over the human like a wetsuit. Uh, I guess I have no other choice but to skin this octopus open and try to take a look at the face of the human within. And how tall is the ceiling from where I'm standing? Uh, about 15 feet into the air. And I'm guessing the nearest wall is about 5 feet? Yeah. Great. I am going to move a good 20 feet. So then I'm, I'm, I'm literally like climbing on the ceiling. And I do not need to do any sort of ability check because I have... Uh, bestial soul and climbing which means that my climbing speed is equal to my walking speed and that I can climb difficult surface including upside down on ceilings without needing an ability check well okay then <laughs> <laughs> there's two of characters with that essentially spider climbing the actual party god damn yeah. yeah when I saw that I was very ecstatic to grab it because um my first ever D and D party, I had a character that could do that, and it was very, very useful. So, yeah, valid. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. So you her, bring out your bestial soul. The claws go over your hands. Your tail comes out and helps to give you balance. You get your claws coming from your your feet, and you start dur, dur, climbing upwards. 
uh, you are now above everyone else, and you can see a little bit towards uh, this area. You see being moved, like dragged, as if they're trying to do it before you notice them. You see more of those octopus hybrid looking fuckers. Uh, about three of them, maybe, off in the distance. Each of them dragging something gross and morose looking, almost corpse ish. They're, they seem to all be trying to transpire it up to here, up near some pews and it, like a, uh, uh, looks like ruins and stuff. Okay. I am... I'm gonna tell Robert that... Well, I'm gonna tell Robert as quietly as possible to where he can hear me that there are two enemies right here and here, and then there's another enemy way farther right across from the actual mural in the middle. Lovely, lovely. And... I am gonna just crawl just ever so slightly to right about there. Oh shit, my fucking <laughs> Google reset itself. There we go, get back. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> okay, there, okay. Mm -hmm. As he does it, I'm actually going to go move right here, you know. Since I doubt they can actually see. Cammy on the well, Amos on the roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they can see me, mm -hmm. but they can see me and well. Yes, we all remember what last time someone with the ability to climb unimpeded did. So, movement occurs as such. These guys move a little bit closer towards their objective, but this one stops. It turns to you, this octopus upon its head. Not noticing Cammy, just you, Rob. It turns to you, uh, holding in its hand, you now see, is this huge, fleshy, almost like a rib. It looks like the side of a cow rib, in a way. Um, like a, a flank. And it, it's just disgusting. It looks slimy, moldy, rotten. And it's, the moment it sees you, it goes, and you can kind of hear, you know, you can no longer see them as well, Cammy. Um... You can very much hear the other ones reacting. Uh, Steve, though, I will say, you up here can see this one moving on the right side. And you can see it turn around and points down towards Cammy and Amleth and gestures to something over here. I am going to use my wasp needles and I am going to Try to tie this guy up and let uh, Robert kind of take care of him before anybody else shows up. Alright, that's a, if I remember, attack rule on your end. Not a strength check on that, uh, right? Right, I just gotta pull up. It's in the Discord somewhere. Uh, go ahead and do whatever you gotta do. I just gotta look through, find the right one, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Da, 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 da. It's in general, right? I thought it was. What's with the lisp? I, I don't know. I didn't even realize it until you pointed it out. And then I was like, wait, why the <laughs> fuck did I, why did I has a, why, oh, why yeah. did I has a, oh, why did God. I have a lisp? What is what is wrong with you? Are you okay? I don't know. You've been <laughs> smoking too much of that bong, man. It's good into you. I haven't been taking a hit today, which is a funny thing. Uh, <laughs> this is just ah, my natural stupidity. Alright. Alright, I found it. So, um, around the same creature, this one about to that binds and restrain it. Um, so, all, so, I don't have to roll for anything. Mm -hmm. The creature has to roll for a strength check and it has oh, to be above okay. 13. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, 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 in that case... Uh, it does not. 
it gets binded, gets wrapped up. Rob, what would you uh, like to do as you see it gets wrapped up by Cammy? Also, I'm going to say, looking at whatever it was dragging, that's fucking nasty. <laughs> I'm going to call up to Cammy. Where's the other one? Two more farther away. One possibly over in Rocco's vision. The other one is somewhere else farther up. Kill this one while you have the chance. Yeah, but this is going to be whiskey. I'm going to move up and... Simply hit it with my Thunder Gauntlets. Fair Three enough. times. <laughs> Three times because attacks pull axe in two, plus my bonus axe in mm -hmm. to do the two. It's pawn, so do I get advantage or is it pawn? Uh, it's not prone, but it's grappled, is what I would consider it. So yeah, I would say you still get advantage. A nice dirty 20. Okay, a good start, a good start. Nice, nice. I can imagine you run up and just punch it. It's like, half punch it, half slam it directly into the wall. <laughs> okay, okay, you give it a concussion pretty hard. Okay, that hits again. They are cold, they don't exactly have, like, massive <laughs> ICs. And for my bonus, that's gonna do the... Classic. Get I don't get my modifier, so it's a straight D twenty. Just a good punch to the face. <laughs> to my own face. I see. was that a nat one. <laughs> that was a nat one. Ooh. Okay, so it starts nice. as such. You're leaning into him. I don't know if you guys. Um, have seen Evil West. It's a cowboy game that basically is like a uh, God of War Yeehaw edition. Pretty fun game. Uh, it's got a great system where it uses electricity to fight vampires. And one of it is a Volt Dash, where you basically zap them and use the electricity to... Uh, it, it, the arc of the lightning follows your arm as you punch the fucker, right? Like, it drags you almost magnetism to them. I like to imagine you do that. You zap them. You come up. You run up and punch them. Boom! Slamming them into the wall. Then you go, and as they react and come back up, you just uppercut them. And then, as you go to slam, punch them one more time, they instinctively react and duck. And as you do that, you just slam your fist into the wall. I'm just going to say you take four damage from punching the wall, and that's it. You don't break your hand or anything. You just really hurt your hand when you punch the wall. Fuck! Shit! Ow! Fucking bitch! Um, and I sigh to myself saying, this is why you have a professional do everything. And I just kind of crawl over him. <laughs> I, I, I am not I, a fighter! I just crawl over real quick, and since the, he hasn't noticed me, I'm going to do a surprise attack. So, with that, I'm going to roll. And, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Sorry, wrong one. Oh. And, uh, first, um... All right, so basically with advantage, that is 19 to hit. Yeah, you And... Can. Okay, cool. It had, like, no health left <laughs> after Rob. If he would have just landed the last hit, you would have killed it. Okay. And... I call my wasp needles back. Whoop! It comes right back to you. And yes. after that, I quickly run up the wall and go back right on the ceiling. Okay, you can see... Uh, I would say running up this wall here and heading up on the ceiling. Uh, you could both see, you and State can see that this guy, while pointing to you and was gesturing to something over here, um, is now back to moving. This guy is all, I didn't even stop. He's just up here moving. But you now can see Omleth. Uh, give me a second. Did I? Oh, fuck. Please tell me I uploaded it here. There's your, there we go. 
you see this monstrosity, a Frankenstein creature of, it looks like dead flesh, rot tentacles, and every gross thing you can think of standing there. Um, let me upload it to the Discord real quick for you guys. Should be in the inner demons art. Here we go. And so this awesome. is what you can see as on top of the area. What you can only assume is your uncle. Oh, 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 that's pretty good. That's a nice little character design you found. Thank you, thank you. So, being oh, the only shit. one to see this, what would you do, Gammy? I am... That, that's actually a good question. Okay. So, just to kind of go back in history for a second. You remember when we were in uh, Lagos? Yes, Los Palagos. And do you remember when I had been given a special little candy... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. So, considering <laughs> I haven't used that yet, I oh, would like to... My. I would like to just... Because I'm assuming that they that all of them know that we're here, regardless. We're just kind of picking off one by one. I am just going to simply talk to Robert and see if I can somehow talk to Ragnar over there and say my uncle is here and his goons are trying to build something up to him got a little special gift for him you two focus on the smaller ones I'll take care of my uncle now does Ragnar hear that Yes, if you don't care about being particularly stealthy, then yeah, yeah, hundred mm. percent. And you know what? I'm just gonna drop straight back to the ground, and I'm gonna yell out, "You wanted me? I'm right here. So come and get me." A laugh, Uncle, echoes out. Good to see you, nephew. As bounding over the railing, breaking part of this column, he slams directly in front of you. Robert, you can see, Steak, you can see, that large creature I put into a uh, Discord is now bounding above Cammy. Ah, do you like my new form, nephew? Your father's life was certainly worth the power. Hmm. Well, since we are having a little outfit change, I guess you should see mine too. And I am going to pop that red skull candy, and I am very curious to know what it does. So when you pop that red skull candy, your, your bestial stuff is activated by your rage, right? Uh huh. So that candy pisses you off to an umpteenth degree. So, um, basically, imagine all your rage bonuses doubled. Your reach is now doubled. So you get 10 feet reach because your claws physically lengthen to 5 feet long. So you're able to reach an extra 5 feet. Your tail itself lengthens this long, jagged tail with spikes on it. Your tail itself feels extra damage. You feel this rage physically start burning. Rob and Steak, you see a fire, a red and dark red and burgundy flame. Almost Jojo, like, Stan-esque are appearing around Kami, where he just gets fucking pissed. I see, nephew. Good. I wouldn't want your sacrifice to be easy. And go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, before we I... do that, can I uh, use my last second level slot to cast Red Boy on the fucker? To, to you know, help out Cammy a bit. You say Red Boy? 
Uh, I want to use web. Web. I'm so sorry. I thought I miss. I, I misheard you. I thought oh, you no, said. Oh no, you probably did. I probably said it. What speaks of Pakistan is a bitch. Yeah, I thought you said red boy. I'm like, who's the red? Are you just ye the fucking nails at it? Get him, bitch. To summons with nails somehow. But yeah, I want to cast web at my last second level on Amleth's uncle to trap in and make it easier for Amleth to fight. You know what? During that little monologue section, I say you could do that. You can move to about right here, get a clear shot, and boom, right at the uncle. Cool, cool. Now he needs to make a dex 15 save. Let's okay. hope he make, doesn't make it. Well, he makes it. Fuck. The <laughs> webbing wraps around him, and to a normal person, the webbing would have been more than enough to um, have stuck around him. But all he is so big and so many tentacles and movements going around him that the web just ends up getting wrapped around a single tentacle, almost like a noodle wrapped around a fork. He wraps it around, catching it, and just leaves it there on the tentacle. It's a concentration spell, so it's up to an hour on every turn. Star of his turn, he has to make a deck save. Okay. So what I'll say and I, I, is and that... I think Cammy has, Amleth has to make one since it's a 20-foot radius. Do you want do to center it on him, or are you wanting to hit it like back here so that it doesn't hit Cammy? Uh, yeah, right here. Right there, right so that then, then it hits it hit around him. him. But doesn't hit Cammy yet. Yeah, yeah, it would just barely not reach Cammy. Okay, perfect then. Yeah, so it hits him, and then let's roll for initiative, everybody. We got Stake up top up here, we got Cammy down here, and Rob right behind him. Uh, so I rolled a 13 on initiative. 13, 13, okay. I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, did anything come out of me, uh, cutting open the octopus to see the human inside? So as you cut it open, uh, while this is all happening, Rocco, uh, real quick, so before the, even the uncle, like, jumps out and all this happens, uh, and this, like, anime fight starts to get, uh, active, you cut open the corpse and underneath you notice um missing because you've lived here the missing members of the village that have gone the people have gone missing you realize that as you de like skin the head oh my god you know this person this is the missing woman from six months ago this is the woman you helped to go look for in the woods. And then you almost throw up as you realize the entire time they've been kidnapped by 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 the person who's supposed to have been helping set the town up. Damn. Alright. Um Yeah, that's uh twelve on initiative for me though. Alright, twelve, yeah, fourteen for Rob. Uh, 11, 11, 12, 14. <laughs> I'm, I'm 13. I was just testing. Oh, 13. Okay. 12, 13, 14. <laughs> and then uh, a 5. Yeah, and then a 5. So plus the guy's dex, he still will not be coming anywhere near you guys. So it will start with Rob. Go ahead. I'm just going to flip Camp Amulet's uncle off. Say fuck you, asshole. And I'm going to move right, going to move right here. And hit that guy with a firebolt. Smart, smart. Go ahead. Fourteen hits or no? That hits, yes. Oh, thank. Ooh, for a nice. Fuck yeah! No, you just behead this, this octopus. Is and just you can see uh, as the octopus burns away. That the face underneath used to be a drinking buddy of yours, Robert. Before he went missing. You thought he just oh, skipped you... town. Oh, you son of a fucking bitch. Albert, you better kill that fucker. And with... That might never changed. And I'm going to use my Guardian Armor Defensive Field bonus action. Nice six template hit points. Nice, nice. 
you just tap your thing, and much like uh, Iron Man's spider suit for uh, Peter Parker, he's got you got that little like tightening around your body, and as it tightens, you feel the uh, little thorns that you filled with uh, healing, uh, like a little potion that stab into you and heal you slightly. Level kids, drugs are not cool unless you're an adventurer. Unless you're an adventurer, then it's really fucking cool. <laughs> Uh, Cammy, go ahead. It is your turn. Your uncle stands in front of you, menacingly. All right. Menacingly! <laughs> uh, so we are going to... <laughs> so we're going to use... Uh, I'm going to have one battle axe in my hand, and then I'm going to have my claws in my other. And... For the axe, we have 24 to hit. That hits... And since I took that pill, uh, it's like double damage. Yeah. So 24 points of damage for just the axe. And then let me just go ahead and use my claw. Uh, 22. That also hits. And with that, we have... 12 damage. So, all in all, 36 damage. Alright, so I imagine it starts with you throwing an axe. He starts to try to catch it, but the blade cuts the tentacle in half, slamming it directly into your uncle's, like, neck. He goes, ah, ah, and as he bounds backwards, you bound forward, slicing up his abdomen with your claws, leaving a bloody mess behind. Ah, I see, he just looks up at you, smiling. I see you've grown up. Good. Let's see if I can teach you some tricks, old dog. Is there anything else you would like to do with uh, movement or anything like that? No, I think I'm pretty good where I'm at. Okay. Then, Supreme, it will be your turn. All right, I'm going to sneak over in this direction, and I'm going to try to hit this, uh, how do I ping? Uh, this guy in the bottom right. This guy um, right here? Yeah, that guy. Okay. Um, with my short bow. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. That hits. Oh, that fucking hits, right? Um, okay. Yeah, a 19 plus whatever bonus you got. Yeah, I think that hits pretty high. <laughs> okay, okay. So, you don't outright kill them with your a single shot from your bow, but you do heavily injure them. You can see that you slam it into the arm. They drop the meat that they were holding. Uh, sorry, it's an additional 11 damage, so it's 17 total. 17 total. Okay, so never mind. You kill this person, as I forgot you have a second shot. Um, with the second shot... No, it was, it was sneak attack plus the original damage. That's right, that's right. Okay. Oh, that's right, because yeah, the elevation... That's right. Okay, I'm sorry. My brain took a second, but I get it. Okay, so you... From the elevation, you're able to get a height... A sight on their head, and you sp an arrow directly into their head. They fall over dead. Wow. One hit, one kill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, each time you guys have attacked them, you guys are able to deal at least over the 12, 13 points of health they have. Wow. Not bad, not bad. This is going to be a very particular fight. Very. All the Everyone else has gone down, but your uncle, not even looking bloodied, looks to you now. <laughs> Who needs them? They're just here to help me build this new form. As you, he says that, you see that a little bit of the damage, not all of it, just a little bit of the damage you dealt, uh, Amleth, heals back. Don't you understand, boy? This is more than just your, our pitiful family. This is true power. As he leans his arm back, and go to give me a dex check, Cammy, as he slams forward, as this literal storm of tentacles in like a column slams towards you. 
And I'm going to do that with advantage. Oh, thank God I did with advantage. Uh, so 19 to save. So you're and so my second roll... Uh, my second roll wasn't at one. Oh, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're still going to take uh, half the damage as he does end up pushing you out of the way a little bit. But not the whole damage. And you, how much are we talking? You're just be taking nine damage with because of your rage halved again. So just four damage. Four damage. Sounds good. As he and destroys and... all of you see, he destroys the table. It's gone. There is no more table. <laughs> then with his other ac um, hand he just holds up a tentacle and slams it into the ground stake what uh, actually no, no, not what is your AC does a does a 19 hit you yep Okay, so you, as this tentacle slams through the ground, up towards the, uh, like, breaking the concrete below it, up towards you, Stake, you get just fucking slammed by this tentacle, sending you flying over ten feet into the table, breaking upon the table. Uh, you will be taking 17 points of bludgeoning damage as you get sent flying from the tentacle. Uh, can I use my uncanny, uncanny dodge to have the attacks damage? Yes. So that was 17 damage? Yes, so that would be five, 8 damage. Cool. And can I do an opportunity attack? Um, No, because he has not moved. He's just ah, using okay. his tentacles to like go through the ground. He's not physically moving. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I wasn't sure because he's focused on someone else or not. Oh, no, that's only for rogues. Fuck. Mm hmm. All right. All right. All right. All good. Then back to top of round as he has healed. Uh, so let's see, he's healed 32. So he, he basically healed the equivalent of 10 HP. Um, basically, pulling a uh, very similar to how I think other DMs have described a troll healing. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard how DMs are trolled. How it's like stitching, where the skin essentially stitches itself back together. That's what happens. Your claw, one of the uh, one of the slashes on the claw stitches itself back together as you're back up top with Rob. That's it? Come on, I thought you were less of a pussy than that. Focus on me. All right, Robert, what would you like to do? Oh, Rob's uh, gone again. God damn it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I wonder where the fuck Rob went. Oh, shit, he's gone. I wasn't even paying attention. I was, like, really focused on this. <laughs> His nephew must really love that router. Oh, there he is. There he is. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hi. Ah, I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am. All I know is I must kill. <laughs> ah. All right. It is uh, back at the top of the initiative. It is your turn, Rob. Cool. I see that Walker got stake got rid of the other fucker. Mm-hmm. Up I go again, right here, and a nice solid fireball at his that fucker's face. Solid, quick, easy. Um, it. Is it possible for me to do it actually non lethally so I can give the final kill to Cammy? With fire? Oh, not even bloody. Aim for the knee? Kneecap the motherfucker. I'm gonna say no because ah. either way it's flames and fire, you know. It's not like a sword where you can like just hit them with a hilt, you know? All right, go ahead and take like... me your attack roll and damage. And I will say, as he gets hit with fire damage, um, Cammy and Robert, you can see pretty well. Stake, you can't really see from over there. But uh, Cammy and Robert, you can see that the fire damage itself leaves him uh, charred where it hits. But you see boiling. More than just, like, 
the fire boils that you would get from uh, burning or third degree burns. This is like almost chemical, as if his body's reacting to the flames. That's a solid 19. Your uncle looks fucked, but he's still bulking up, bulking on through. Steak, it is your turn. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It is Cammy. You're 13, right? Yes. So, Cammy, it is your turn. Uncle, I've been waiting for such a long time, and I always hoped that I could get a second chance to kill you again. You want to talk about true power? <laughs> you truly are an old man. Times have changed. I am power. And with that, actually, no, we are not going to use a battle axe this time. We are going to first strike with our claws. And does 17 hit. That... Uh, yeah, that hits. And with the claws, we have 16 damage. And with that, the next attack is going to be a bite. Uh, 20 obviously hits. Yeah. And so with that, we have 18 damage. So, 16 plus 18, that is 30... 34? 34, yeah. So, you just so slice him damage. up. Um, yeah, you know what? You'll see what happens on his <clears throat> turns. Dake, what would you like to do? I'm going to move up to about where I can see him. And then I'm going to... Um, Shoot him with an arrow. Uh, do I get... Ew. Cammy, you're not within five feet of him, are you? I am. Yes. Are, are, yeah, I have to be. For even though I, even though I have... Well, for ten feet reach, I guess. Oh, but, I guess you don't have to. But you did say you bit him, which I think is... I, I would say that yeah. as far as like logic goes, I would have to be five feet within, so... Yeah, yeah. For the, yes. at least the bite, I would I'd have to agree. Right. So, yeah, Stick. That means I get advantage. Ha, 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 ha. That's right. You're a rogue. <sighs> Fucking rogues. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that he was a rogue. Yeah, you hit, Rocco. <laughs> Sneak attacking bastard. <laughs> Christ! So that's <laughs> 20, 20 total. Uh, uh, uh. Taking an arrow straight to the eye, your uncle is pissed. On his turn, his eye starts to heal back that, like, you know, quick little damage that he heals. But oh, fuck. he grabs you, and um, he's going to do a grapple check. So it's going to be his strength versus your... Oh, does a 26 grab, uh, beat your AC, Kami? Uh, um, well, well, I'm gonna... Go ahead. I still have wrap up. He, said he needs to make a deck save. Okay. And I'm actually gonna use a reaction while that happens. Go ahead and do whatever you gotta do. Yeah, that's a 24 <laughs> uh, deck save. Ah, ah, he made it. Fuck. Twice to stop him from doing whatever he's doing. And what was the question that you were asking me earlier? Um. Oh, I was just asking if a twenty. I think I said twenty-four hits you, or twenty. Shit, no, twenty-six. Sorry, twenty-six. Uh, fuck. Damn it. Fuck. So, as a reaction, I used my tail to roll a d8. To add to my current AC, I rolled an 8, and adding that to my AC, that is a 26. So... Oh, but if it, it meets, it yes. meets. 
So so he beat it. All right. Barely. So he grabs you, Cammy, and as he does, you feel the tension as all the tentacles wrap around you, and he just goes, <laughs> "Time to leave the nest, little one." As he just yells, "Fly!" As he throws you into stake, stake and uh. Say, give me a dex save as you try to duck, essentially, Cammy. Sorry if you guys are hearing whispers from me. I currently have a cat in my lap and she's biting me. It's okay. 25. Okay. So you'll both be taking half, because in a rage you always take the half cami. Um, uh. So you both will be taking 14 points of damage as cami, you slam into stake. Both of you slam me into the wall, falling on the ground prone, injured. And as that happens, Robert... Can I just... have it a second time with Uncanny Dodge? Um... Can you? I actually don't know. Let me check a uh, candy dodge. It says when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack. Man, I wish they gave more description for those things. It'd be so much easier to make a decision. <laughs> uh, it means you can only use it once a turn. A rogue thinks invincible. Uh, yeah, it's a single guy. You can half his attack again. Sweet. So there'll be seven damage for you, uh, Rocco, as you roll with the punches. Uh, uh, quite literally, you roll with <laughs> Cammy's fist, run up, slamming into you. Uh, and with this, Rob, you would see as they're standing on top of each other, he lifts up his hands, sliming together. They turn into one massive tentacle, and you see he whoosh through the ground again. This time, one massive tentacle going right through the middle Brrr, right through here and slamming up into you guys this time no roll as you're both prone you guys are gonna take and there's no half in this one um nope. <laughs> <laughs> save that uncanny dogs for this okay one more okay um so Rocco, you take 23 points of damage, and Cami, that means you would take 11 points of damage, as this tentacle slams up from the ground and just slams down into you, crushing both of you underneath it. <laughs> Ragnar is out cold. Oh god, I woke us down! So... Is that all you got? <laughs> Rob, it is your turn. Like, I have a healing spell, but the thing is... I can't... Get, I'm gonna have to climb to get up there. That would be an athletics check, yeah. Yeah, and that might take up my 30 feet. Uh... If you want to do an athletics check, I'll say you can do your spell if you succeed. Fuck it, fuck it. Here I go. Running, hope up and up here. Mm. Pretty much right. Bounding off of a, a nearby stool, trying to get a little extra height, you jump up. Gonna give me your athletics check. Or acrobatics, either way. You get it, you get up there. Oh thank fuck and I'm going freaking basically warm my hands. My god, it's like the difficulty, and say kill and cast kill wounds at first level because I don't have a second level anymore. All right, you cast cure wounds for nine health. Yep, for on what well, stake. <laughs> Welcome back to the land of living, Ragnar. I uh, cough up blood dramatically <laughs> as I wake up. <laughs> Amazing. That's it for my turn. Use my movement and my action. I would say, um, just because you, 
Uh, you go second. Okay, perfect. Uh, Cammy, it is your turn. You guys are all up, five feet, five to six feet up, looking down upon your uncle. I will say he looks very injured, Cammy, but so do you. All right. This is probably going to be the end of it. I will let you know. Uh, before I do anything else, I just look at Ragnar and I say, you know, if you can help, it'd be really, really kind of you if you didn't die on me. I've already got enough blood on my hands from people I care about. And then with that... Uh, oh, he cares that. about us! <laughs> and do you remember that very particular spear that I picked up from Los Blagos? Yep, the the Fury Spear. The, that the, good old clerk. the Hell Spear. Yep, that good old clerk yeah, got ready hell for spear. you. Yeah, we're gonna use that. As you bring it and... forth and you draw it, um, you know, you know, uh, Kratos with the the, the Drapnir spear. Oh yeah, with uh, Heimdall. Yeah. Yes. So you suddenly feel, as your rage. Remember, I told you there'd be an ability that gets unlocked with your rage. Uh huh. You can now, f you feel it. Your tip of your spear with this rage through you, lights a flame. As you feel, you can slash the very air with fire. <laughs> Take note, uncle. Because this... <laughs> this... Is what I am. I... Am your death. I promised... To rain down a thousand agonies upon you. To ring upon destruction in pain. And now, <laughs> this is who you will finally see out of me. And with that, that is a 19 to hit. So, and you know I the... throw it with 18 damage. Uh, go ahead. Perfect. I was going to say, you know that, um, that how Kratos is able to throw the Dropner Spear, and he, like, slams it down and, like, explodes. So you throw it into your uncle's head. It pierces into his neck. You tap your foot, and the spear explodes into a fireball, exploding your uncle's head. Is the spear, like, gone permanently? No, the spear's here. The spear's still there. Oh, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. That's just what you can do with this uh, candy rage mix. <laughs> Holy uh... Huh. Yeah, with this extra rage, you can do a rage ball, aka a rage fireball. <laughs> <laughs> me as the player, me as the counter saying, holy fuck! Where the fuck did you get that? Uncle, headless, just points to you. I... He takes a step forward. Made! Takes another step. You... Falls. That's the end of our initiative. I stand there, and I draw on a nice big smile, and I just start laughing. And I laugh so much that I actually start just kind of bending over, trying to hold my stomach, because I'm laughing so hard. That was the most fun. I could have ever had. Uh, man, that fucking druggie knew what he's talking about. God damn, I wish I had more of that. Uh. One, where the fuck did he get that drug? That shit, what? And two, where the hell did he get that weapon? I've never seen one like that before. Same place, different situations. Fuck. My I managed to. Rage warrior. <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, that. That is. That's a neat little trick. I am very glad that worked out very well. Um, as uh, you but, guys are seeing there, recovering, you do notice that your uncle's body starts moving. It, he's dead, but the flesh itself begins to. 
mold, it looks like. It's like it's changing on the ground. Firebolt! So it's firebolt, that fuck. Nope. Fair enough. <laughs> As you hit it, you just see that the skin boils, but it steals almost like a, a a slime cube of flesh. I walk over to it and I try to speak with it. I'm laughing. The <laughs> same voice from the gauntlets. So, is this your true form? <sighs> You will not stop your uncle. I hope you know that. He's not dead. He's a lich. A lich. His phylactery is far from here. Huh. So, that wasn't him I just fought? That was his form. He gave up his physical form. I gave him a new form. Pure energy and power. Until you break his soul, he'll find a new form eventually and find you. Now, why in the world would I trust a single word out of you? <laughs> Listen. Maybe because with your uncle dead, you're the last member of this family with my curse. <laughs> then I might as well just keep him alive until I can kill him again again. It gets silent as the, uh, you don't think the devil was expecting that. <laughs> and I'll keep killing him again and again until... You break the curse. You may be unkillable. You may be immortal. But you feel all of the pain that he feels. So, how about we strike a little deal? If you want to feel no more pain, if you want to be free, from that agony, all you have to do is break the curse. And you can run uh, a, a, a you can run inside all you want. There is no way I'm lying about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the amalgamation turns into this type of fleshy smile and face you know not of how curses and ancient issues work I'm not the one that set the curse upon you your father did <clears throat> you have to break this curse You say that like you want this curse to be broken. I say that to remind a mortal of actual facts. You mortals tend to get them mixed up a lot. It's infuriating. Hmm. And he does spit what on the happen ground. If I, <laughs> and what would happen if I refuse to break this curse? And I just kill my uncle over and over again. Then one day, when he is back, strong enough, I will kill you and make you join my army. <laughs> your father promised to me your soul for eternal nature. And your uncle may have interfered and given himself the eternal nature. But I'm still owed my soul, boy. Hmm. All right. And where is my uncle's soul? If I give him, if I give you his soul, will that break the curse? 
I could be satisfied. Fine. But with that curse, if I break the curse for you, then you will leave this realm never to return. You will forever stop meddling in our world. You clearly don't understand the curse your father put. I would have been a dead god long ago if it wasn't for your father's faith. You being alive is the only thing keeping me here. If you die, I die. Hmm. So. So you're like a leech on my that. life. And you're a leech on mine. And I want our lives back. Well. Maybe we can form a partnership of sorts. Maybe I could warn you when your uncle's nearby. But he he <clears throat> they the, the demon gestures the entire amalgamation to this giant hand, almost like Big B's uh, giant hand, um, the kind of earth and grasp. He uh, turns into a hand. If I transfer the immortality of not being able to if I transfer the deal to you, and you give that to me, it could make you... We're basically no longer doing immortal. We're essentially changing the soul for immortality for soul for me leaving. And that means I'll no longer be able to tell where your uncle is. Exactly. I'll only be able to give you warnings. I won't be connected to him anymore. And you will... You will have a demon with you, and no church will ever come near you. But I can give you more power than just that, if you trust me. And what is the catch? If I'm hungry, I eat with your body. If I s lust, I fuck with your body. If I'm thirsty, I drink with your body. If I'm angry, I kill with your body. Until the curse is lifted. So, then basically all we have to figure out is what you eat, what you drink, and what you like to do. So, I'm assuming you like to eat flesh? Variety of things. It really depends. May sometimes flesh, sometimes a blueberry muffin. Hmm. How about this? You will be able to live inside of me. I will have control all of the time. Only, only if I keep you sustained. I keep this body sustained for you. You have all the food that you want. You have all the drink that you want. You have all the women that I choose. You get every single pleasure that you so desire as long as I have control on one condition that if you're going to die that if our lives are at risk I take control and that I can work with only if I truly die you better hope you don't die with the demon in you boy deal and before you can even react he grabs your hand and around you you're fucking just the air gets cold you feel tension within the air as everything goes around you the amalgamation of flesh on the floor wraps around your arm and up and enters your pores you feel it enter you the sickly energy and as it makes you feel sick like you're gonna vomit you stand up and finally, you two can look at Cammy, and Cammy doesn't look the same. Cammy's got his left eye is bright green. Hey, uh, hey, uh, man, you you good there? It's fine. I mean, you don't look fine. Your your eyes green. Yeah, 
I just happened to make a new friend. This is all. Oh, oh, that's a uh, fucking Christ. Fuck <laughs> I like that. Oh, that's fuck. <laughs> no. What can you tell me about this place, Steven? Actually, what name should I call you? Call me asshole. Well, I feel like a Zazel is too long. Just call me Zeal. Zeal. Yes. I can work with Zeal. No, Zeal. Before we grab a drink and some food, I need you to tell me everything that happened. And no lies. So, projecting from your eye as if it is a hologram, uh... Ragnar and Robert, you guys can see this as well. This tiefling comes out. He is of greenish texture in nature, looking a little bit like Salzar, but uh, with purplish and green textures instead of the red and blue. Ah. Good to move around and stretch again. 10,000 oh. years! Yeah, can give, you a give you a crazy to the neck. Who the <laughs> fuck is that? Call me Zeal. I, I okay, Zeal. What the fuck is going? I didn't sign up for this shit. I am the familial curse and demon that follows this young man. Oh yeah, fucking hell! Wait, no, what did our friend get himself into? Oh, nothing. He's getting himself out of a situation. In fact. <laughs> Goes damn, what the hell? So, here's what happened, boyos. Years ago, good old Amleth here, his little old daddy boy decided maybe he didn't want his family to die. Maybe he didn't want to become a vampire or a werewolf. Maybe he wanted to be human or humanoid. He wanted to remain his orky self, as some may say. The thing is, that all comes with the price. Now, who do you go to if you want immortality, but you don't want to earn it? To a devil. And that's me. Now, back in my heyday, I used to be quite the devil. I used to be uh, a nice resident of the seventh layer, as they say. The thing is, though, as time went on and, well, I've been stuck here, my following has died and I've become weaker. Now, that hasn't stopped your uncle, though. Your uncle, years ago, when I was still in my prime, found your father studying me. And while your father was studying me, well, he decided to have a kid. You. He had you and offered you for this power. Instead of his own soul, he wanted to offer his firstborn. The thing is, I don't quite fly that way. I don't take other souls for one person's betterment, I guess you could say. So I denied your father. In a rage, she flew throwing things around. And then your uncle gave me a proposition. What if he kills himself? Maybe your father ends his own life, and then I give him back. A new life of immortality. Now what I didn't know is that your uncle had cursed the blade to steal your father's soul into the blade. So I didn't even get it when he died. When your slather, slather, your father slit his throat, I didn't touch his soul. But you know whose I did? Your uncle. Your uncle has a very nasty, nasty soul. And boy, let me tell you, he was more than willing to give it up. <laughs> that thing wasn't very clean to tear around either. It left a mark. And ever since then, well, I've been stuck here, bound to your uncle. But he's a powerful one, I'll tell you that. He's no common lich either. He ain't just a wizard of any sorts. He used my power, what was left of it, to gift him this 
knock off immortality. As you may know, immort true immortality means you never die. I will never truly die. I'll never come back to this realm if Cammy dies. I'll never be able to have power if Cammy dies. But at least my soul will go into the limbo. But you mortals, you can very well easily die. And so even as a lich, we can still kill his soul. So, is there any other questions you little beings need answered? Anything else required of me? Well, it's been real, Amleth. Uh, it's good to see you after all of these years. Uh, I'm going to go pack up my home now, and I'm moving somewhere far away. Uh, don't find me. And I and walk out does. of the dungeon, and I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to get with it, that. And before he actually leaves, Ragnar, I am sorry. You've been lied to, and you have lost quite a bit about your life. I hope that our paths can cross again one day. I hope for the opposite, but I do wish you well on getting rid of this curse, because... Boy, that was... Yeah, I'm gonna get going. See you guys later. I actually, no, don't don't find me. Bye. They just hey, bye. leaves. <laughs> bye. Now it's just you, Rob, up there and uh, with Amleth and a demon. <laughs> or devil, I technically. It was like, oh, well, this, this is my life oh. now, I guess. Uh, and... okay, I think... Okay, well, so what do you want to do now? Um, if you want to just bomb this place down, get let, let this memory out? Mm. I need to do more research concerning my new friend. Zeal. Yes. Where can I find some books? Your father's based study. On... And around mm. here. He gestures everywhere. Sure, some of it's covered in blood now after you know your friend beheaded that one octopus motherfucker, but uh, <laughs> you know they're still here. You can research for a while. Everything your uncle knew about me is here. Fine. We let me go ahead and find a chest real quick. See if I can find anything. Let's see. Let's see. And is there an empty? ish chest that I can grab. Yeah, yeah, pretty easily just like around the corner over here, just the emptiest chest. Okay. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to put every single book that I need to do research on. All right. Uh as Zeal zips out of uh view because he is uh, of course it's a projection of your eye that you get to control from now on that uh whether you allow him or not to come out. Um Mm -hmm. You have a demon, or a devil, a Zazel, in your left eye, Cammy, And that's how we're, we'll be ending today's session, is you get all the books and gather the research. Um, what would you like to do as your epilogue? Uh, I'll let you guys handle it and kind of narrate it through. We have, uh, of course, we'll start with uh, Steak, and then we'll go to Robert, and then we'll end with Cammy as you are the biggest one. You'll have, you know, head heading back to the uh, inner demons, etc. So... First with steak, what what is your epilogue? Um, Ragnar uh, gets home. Yeah, it's the middle of the night. What, what time? It's the middle of the night? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah he gets home. He uh, wakes his wife up. He uh, kisses her and hugs her. Goes to all of his children, you know, uh gives them hugs and kisses and and you know just reaffirms life and that they're living and then he uh he he begins packing up the house and uh in the morning he goes he buys a horse and a wagon with some money that he had saved up he packs it all into the, he packs everything into the wagon and he just goes in a direction 
and just hopes to find a new home somewhere. I imagine the loot you took from the house. I imagine you took like a, a very valuable vase on your way out. Like fuck this place, and I imagine that that loot alone is just like enough to get a house somewhere. Yeah, last session I took like a I took like two hundred gold from a chest. I figure that pays for the wagon and the horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You 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 could like on your way out just loot this place very lightly and just take a few extra things and. I have to imagine you like the next day if Cammy, you're like getting uh, the books and all that ready, and Robert's helping you. I imagine you guys look out, and you see like this wagon pull up, and then start fucking looting shit into the wagon, and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck you, yeah. Daddy! What about the teddy bear? Forget the fucking teddy bear. We're leaving. Forget the teddy bear. You like throw a fucking plant. Here's your new teddy bear. Throws the kids and wife in there too. <laughs> Load them all up and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Absolutely. Ragdar never returns to this place. Never returns to the town. Never. The guy is an old man. You know always what? haunted. Yeah, I was going to say, you know what, uh, Steak? We didn't quite get the uh, the death that we were, we were hoping for Ragnar, but uh, I think this is equally fitting. Him traumatized and say, you know what? No. Fuck this. Fuck I'm this. I'm not my thing. I, I wasn't made to be an adventurer. I was a hunter. I, I'm going to go pickpocket and steal shit. Goodbye. That's still adventuring. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, then, Robert, what do you do? Um, I assume you don't, like, go to join the inner demons with Cammy, but I do assume oh. you don't immediately leave him. Oh, no. Robert sticks around helping Am without... In fact... Once, you know, everything is packed into that chest, he will offer Amleth a place to stay for the night. Because, you know, it's a lot been a long night. And like but, hell, he's going to want to stay here, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, and once in the morning, and once, you know, my six shops open, I op offer, you know, to sell him a bag of hoarding for both the coin that is his, along with the chest. I also were offered... To identify anything he wants, if he has anything to that needs to be identified, like say a sword. I'll have to think about it. I need to investigate the town and make sure everything will be turning out somewhat decent. Yeah, well, I will be here. I'm not leaving town, so if you ever like need magical magical items or stuff to be identified i'm here well how about this how about you move your family into this godforsaken home make it beautiful again as it once was and keep an eye after the town for me i don't think i'll be returning here for a long time well it's just me but I don't have a family. My dad died. Mom died a long time ago. You know that. Dad died a few years ago. Never met met someone at the guild, but yeah. Yeah, I can do that for you. I know it's a lot of responsibility to ask of you, but if you had anything happen, I'll be with my guild. I'll be across the land, of course, but I can always send a few letters my way. If you need anything, my guild will be able to help however it needs. Well, well that's good. It's gonna be a lot, and uh, yeah, I can do well, it. I done, I did it before. I can do it again. Well, the plus to all of that is that every single piece of this house is now yours. Robert, As rightful owner. You are rich now. <laughs> Fuck yeah! As rightful owner of this home. And as rightful heir of this family. I bestow upon my house, my belongings, and in essence, my family name to you. I, uh, like, thank you, Amleth. I, I didn't expect that. 
This what an adventure D and D thing to do. Like, oh yeah, I don't need this house. Hey, other person, you want a mansion? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I think I just glitched out. Um, yeah. Oh god, uh, the is in the back rooms? Fuck. <laughs> uh, what I meant to say was, um, with this, you must sign an oath. For this house, not only is it for stature and, you know, Anything like that. It's also protection. By taking on this oath, you swear to protect this town, to protect this home, to protect it from all forces that deem to defile it. And as a little bonus, should I ever be slain, shall I ever fall you will avenge me or forever live in shame. I like how you take it as a reward that you have to have be avenged. <laughs> and shall it, and your vengeance shall it gorge upon their death in a fiery haze. I mean, I could always build a giant ass bomb to get avenge you. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> So spills a nuke to avenge Amleth. So you swear? I swear. Good. Then it's done. I'll make sure to let the townspeople know. Do not disappoint me. You have a lot of responsibility to take care of now. And this, this will be your family. Yeah, so I might. Hmm, this might be a good opportunity to reconnect with the artificial scale to get them to send someone down here to help. Absolutely, rebuild this town to what it once was. With that, we shall end today's session with Cami. He's spending, I would say, about a week in the village, letting people know. I would like to even imagine that you even, at, to certain people, apologize. Say, like, I'm sorry for what my uncle did, but I'm glad you're okay. Like, move next person. I'm sorry for what my uncle did, but I'm glad you're okay. Next person. I'm sorry for what my uncle did. I'm glad you're okay. I know it's just sounding, now it's just sounding on, <laughs> and, on, uh, uh, and inadequate. Absolutely. Um, but, but, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Is there anything you would like to do during the uh, week here? During the week, I'm obviously going to let the town council know of these circumstances and humbly apologize for my actions in the past as far as almost killing the entire town. Uh, <laughs> um, They're yet to forgive you on that, but they understand that you you have grown up and become helpful. And with that, I also tell them that for a long time that this town was brought upon with a curse. And now that curse is gone from their grasp. And I take all responsibility of this curse. So they have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. And all I ask is that they form a Beautiful paradise here. Restored to once it once was. They nod their head. It's not like they're ecstatic. Because like I said, you definitely have had a history in the past of like harming them. So they're definitely kind of yeah. like, oh, neat. Amleth did that? And yeah, like you, they accept you and they care about what you're doing, but they're still hesitant. But you, you could tell you left an impact. Hmm. With that, I'll be taking my leave. And I swear to you that I will never be back here again. 
Should anything happen to this, please let the inner demons know, and we will help any way that we can. And with that, and then Amoth, I leave. You head back to the inner demons to go see Corvus and Rocco again, to see Nails and Salzar and everyone all over again. As on the way back, I like to think that um, I don't know. I like to think that maybe, maybe, maybe Amoth has a moment of. You know, no matter where he goes, he really isn't alone. Well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Flask, like, Flask, both Walker and Kovas are dead. Yeah, right, like, there's, like, two and... a fucking vampire lord next session. <laughs> and at the final sort of scene, I look out over the long journey ahead of me, and I simply ask Zeal, so... What first? And cut to black. And cut to black. And that's where we end today's session. Cool. All right. Dude, holy shit. Cool. I got a mana that's most likely haunted. <laughs> and f completely fucked up. Good thing I have mending. <laughs> well. Oh. That God. was. That was a very satisfying end. I, I, I liked that a lot. Uh, Rock Steak, are you still there, dude? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay, okay. Man, this is fucked up! It's like, ain't, ain't dude, dude, dude. I love that. You were just like, nope, fuck this. Yeah. Fuck that <laughs> bullshit. I'm out of here. Uh, well. People, <laughs> people going missing and turning into octopuses. Nah. My son's friend. <laughs> no. My son's childhood friend. A robot thing. Nah. <laughs> Demon going into my I... childhood friend. Nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. Nah, this is over. I'm gone. <laughs> oh, my well, that God. was that was a very good fight. I'm not gonna lie. I was very, I, I was waiting so long for the perfect opportunity to just finally take that lit, red little pill. I was waiting so long for the perfect opportunity, and then you just handed it to me on a nice silver little plate. You're like, oh, here you go, sir. Here's your, here's your, uncle god slash. You know, <laughs> here's your uncle slash dead you god. Uh, have fun with the fight. And if you need any help, uh, I'll be mm -hmm. over there with the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> so, all in all, this was a good session today, and thank yeah. you, uh, members, my my fellow party members and DM for making it a good one. Of course, thank you guys for fucking being wonderful players as always. There's, like, y y this backstory is only as good as you guys help it be, and you guys are mwah, mwah, wonderful with your guys' stories. Chef's kiss. The chef's kiss. <laughs> nice. All right, <laughs> All right. Well, well, well um, this... actually, hmm. before we go, I want to make some, Cammy, you want, did you want your, that dragon so identify is that basically the whole reason why I've got an artificer or well, so we can figure out what the fuck is up with that. Oh. Um, I mean, it, I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I didn't plan that at all. Um, how about this? How about we put a pin in that for right now? And like, then... Oh, I was like, oh, I never could be back. Oh, shit, wait. Why is back? Hey. Well, we uh, can put a pin in that for right now. Yeah, we'll 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 we'll, and, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I do have to go. Uh, thank you guys again. This was a lot of fun. Been a long time coming, about two weeks worth. But yeah, it was very much worth the wait. So. Absolutely, definitely worth the wait, guys. As always, so thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you have been, if not, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.